Watch the entire video my lovely viewers, I mean from start to finish, to get the whole thing. Without wasting much of your time, let's get right into it. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Thank you so much Madam President. We are aware that you were at court this morning. Maybe just uh, take us up to speed. What, um, how did it go as we start? Well, I went for what the court calls mention to present myself to the court that uh, I haven't run away. I'm around. They call it mention. And I spent the whole day because our courts have a challenge of uh, space. So our magistrates are sharing court space. But the saddest part of this whole thing, and which I call saga, is that uh, basically the director of public prosecution, one Gilbert Piri, is doing bidding for Haka in the Hichilema. Because Gilbert Piri, we all know, was a lawyer for Haka in the Hichilema. The case with which I've been charged, that of abduction and threatening violence, is a case which is well known. In fact, one Margareta has even come forward and said that uh, during the period with which they are charging me with this abduction, he, Margareta, and others were the ones who were with uh, Feluna and Milton Temo. And I did say in 2021 that, uh, you see, if anyone was looking for these people, the last persons to be in custody of those people was Margareta and the others. Margareta was a well-known security officer for Haka in the So for one Gilbert Piri, director of public prosecution, to be an accomplice to abuse of the courts, to abuse of, you know, just public, private citizens in this country is a shame. I would have thought that the office of the director of public prosecution is a very honorable office. When uh, the DPP gets a docket, in issuing the fiat, the authority to prosecute, one should be very, very careful because uh, these are matters that weigh heavily on one's uh, conscience, on one's morals. But uh, Director of Public Prosecution is issuing these fiats with ease because he wants to please his master, and that master is Haka in the Ichilema. There is no doubt about what is going on because, look, even the indictments themselves, when you sit in those courtrooms and listen, they are defective. You wonder if the DPP is even taking time to read some of those files. So it's most unfortunate that Haka in the Ichilema at this point in time there's so much that is going on. There's hunger. There's cholera. We're just coming out of COVID. There are all sorts of things that are going on. But repeatedly, he's opening new fronts. He's now opening new fronts in Mpika, by elections. We have issues in Western province. This is one human being. And no wonder when people are dying, he flies off to Dubai. We had our children dying on the copper belt there. And instead of uh, being around to commiserate with the families, he's off to Dubai. He comes back. Instead of looking at what is happening, Korea and the end, he's heading cattle in, on his farm. It as though he came to govern only to be doing his private business. And uh, when he's not doing private business, he's looking for which particular citizen to prosecute. I find it most unfortunate, especially that, uh, you know, these are young people on the continent. You would ideally have thought that he should spend his time thinking about how we are going to get out of this uh, economic malaise and uh, lack of uh, direction. 
Look at the kwacha, 27 kwacha to a dollar. Honestly, he said that by midnight, by midday when he's sown in, the kwacha will be five, <laughs> five kwacha. And he said that he was going to fix it. The Zambians didn't hear him properly. He was actually saying, Zambians, I'm going to fix you. He came to fix us as citizens. And I think that uh, it's very, very important to understand that uh, this uh, gentleman is not here to save this country from poverty. He's here for himself and his friends. And he's collected around himself a group of friends that are simply doing what he wants to do. They are bidding for him, whether it's at mines, whether it's at DPP. And as such, he sent a lot of people into confusion. Because if I have to spend the whole money just to wait for mention, and uh, there are 50 of us who have been charged with a defective and uh, really unfounded felonies. How about those people who are in custody, who have been incarcerated for years, they have not been brought before their justices? That should be the concern of a head of state, that right now there are women and men in remand who have to be brought before their, the courts of law. And they are not able to get that space because you are bringing up useless charges, like the charges that uh, he has uh, preferred uh, against me. And everybody knows, including his own people, they say this matter is so embarrassing to Aga in the Ichilema because it's square on his head. And, and as far as I'm concerned, uh, I find it completely preposterous that uh, we can be spending time instead of thinking about farming, instead of thinking about how we are going to clean the dirty city. How actually someone is sitting in, in the so-called community house trying to dream about which next person, which next politician he has to take to court. I think it's a tragedy of our time. And I think that uh, this is an act of someone who is completely insecure, completely unsure of themselves, and uh, truly in a, unable to govern this country. This country under Haga and Ichidema is going nowhere. We have reached a dead end. We have reached a, a, a point of no return. If at this point in time you should be actually be talking about new by-elections in, in Muchinga and the other places, then you really you have no direction. There is absolutely no way. That's why the IMF and the World Bank have literally abandoned this country because they know there's no leadership to invest in. We have a failed leadership, we have a leadership vacuum. Okay. Um, let me just your immediate step uh, looking at uh, the happenings in the party front. Do you feel that um, uh, the happenings of the party uh, have a hand coming from uh, as a president? You say, do the happenings in Patriotic Front have a, have a hand of uh, Herod? I want you to know that it doesn't just have the hand of Herod. It has the feet. Hagainde Ichilema has both his feet in, United, in the Patriotic Front. He can't even organize his party. All he's thinking about is how he's going to annihilate all of us. If you are not in court, then he has to skim something. He says, as we saw him say at his press conference, no, they stole a canisius banda. So basically he's saying, I'm doing to them what they did to me. That's what he's saying. And a leader like that for me is extremely dangerous. Hakainde is a danger to the democracy of this country. Whatever is happening in patriotic front smells not only of UPND, but smells directly of Hakainde Ichilema. He is in it because if he wasn't in it and someone else was doing it, he should be able to stand up and say, stop that rot, I don't like it. But he relishes it, he even goes on the air. You members of our fourth estate give him the, the immeasurable time of four hours for him to literally rant about how what he's doing to us as the members of the opposition was done to him. 
the people of Zambia said no to what PF was doing to UPND or any other political party. Never did the people of Zambia expect that they will have another leader who is as vengeful, who is so insecure, who is angry as Haka in the Hichilema. So, uh, where are we now? Democracy in Zambia is at crossroads. And if the international community invested in this person, and I call upon the Secretary General of the Commonwealth, she came here, Madam Scotland, this is her baby. This is her child. I want to tell Madam Scotland that the pregnancy she carried, Zambia, that of democracy, is now aborted. The democracy of Zambia has been aborted by this stillborn child called Hakainde uh, Ichilema as leader of the Republic of Zambia. He has failed the mark of what a democratic leader requires to be because... You need democracy to develop. You cannot develop without democracy. It is for that very reason that in 1990 we took away, we took out uh, uh, our first Republican president from government. We said you cannot have development without democracy. It's very simple. If the members of the press have become so petrified about reporting because they are going to be visited by IBA, if the members of the fourth estate are so worried about broadcasting one Edith Nawakwi, then that's a stillborn child. And that is the basis on which the Commonwealth is based on democracy. Now, I call upon Madam Scotland to come back to Zambia now. Come and talk to us. We'll tell him. We'll tell him the truth. That this man can commit a felony and pass it on to another person. This man can go to a house of parliament, annihilate it, and send members of parliament outside. And unfortunately, you have uh, the speaker who is an educated lawyer. On her own standing, she's an immaculate lawyer. But when it comes to performing the duty for the people, she has failed the mark. Because uh, when we were in the house ourselves, we knew at that time, under uh, Speaker Nabudiato, under uh, late Speaker Mwanamuambu, I mean, their souls rest in peace, we knew that the speaker had no eyes, the speaker had no ears, the speaker has no smell. I wonder this Nelly Muti, where she acquires the eyes to see that a member of the house is misbehaving and therefore she behaves like she's a school teacher. Get out, you are misbehaving. No, it doesn't happen. Someone has to stand from the floor of the house and say, Mr. Speaker or Madam Speaker, is it in order for Edith Nawaki to say or do one, two, three? That's the only time the speaker hears. And then if it is anathema or in breach of the rules of the house, the speaker will refer that matter to the standing committee of the house. But this speaker here, she's a school teacher. She just says, get out, get out, get out. And these uh, members of parliament, I also laugh at them because if he were to send me out, I would walk out with a mess and therefore there would be no speak. Because that mess which they put there, that's what is called a speaker. If I, I were to be chased out, I would bow, go and get that and run outside and the house collapses. But it looks like uh, these colleagues are not tutored on what the rights of being in the house are. But definitely... This speaker, left on her own, I believe Speaker Nelly could actually shine on the continent as a good speaker. But she's fighting Hagainde's battles. And therefore she has no choice but to fight, fight the appointing authorities' uh, uh, battles. On her own, I'm sure she knows that you don't chase out members of parliament like you are, you are in a kindergarten. Even in a kindergarten, there's order. There's a headmaster, there's prefect. There are systems. So uh, purely on this front, I am saying that the international community should stop sleeping because they are responsible for installing Hagainde Ichidem. 
And they should understand that the crisis that Haga and Ichirema is funding in this country is detrimental to the future of the continent, first and foremost. And secondly, to the future of Zambia. Because one, we are stagnant. We are not developing economically, politically, and socially. And uh, you, you cannot have a country which is this stagnant. Whether you talk about you know, the, the IMF, the IMF, it is as though the president <laughs> is, the, is, the, is the one who is a minister of finance. And I laugh honestly. Some of us who have done these jobs, we laugh. The minister of finance is de facto the boss for the director of the International Monetary Fund. I cannot have my president telling the whole world that, no, me, I'm on phone with the World Bank here and I am with... He's on phone with his juniors and he's relishing that. I want to hear Musogotu and saying this afternoon I had an interaction with the director of, of the World Bank or the, the IMF director or the president or something. I also want to hear that the president has been talking on phone with Joe Biden and Xi Jinping. Those are his colleagues, not these junior officials of the World Bank. They are under our feet. They are our juniors. But obviously, I forgive Haga Indejilem. From Grand Thornton to State House and from the ranch to State House, he has no public office experience. And in his nature, he doesn't listen to advice because we have seasoned civil servants. I'm sure... <laughs> Dr. Musokotuane could sit him down and say, Mr. President, we don't do that. You remember he released a memo that the World Bank had approved <laughs> an allocation. And then a notice sent to him that, sorry, not all directors have acceded to it. And says, oh, I think by now it's six hours. It is never done because that announcement should come from secretary to the treasurer because he's dealing with his colleagues. But they lack diplomatic etiquette and diplomatic experience. And when you look at that, you wonder where we are going. Look at us as Zambians. God has been kind, some rains are here. But there's complete mess in the field. There's no fertilizer because they've been giving each other contracts. They are the most corrupt regime, not just in Zambia, but on the continent. And uh, I, I don't know why uh, uh, the international community, and specifically I'm singling out the Americans. The Amer Americans have always stood for justice, governance, democracy. And here is one, Hakainde Ichirema, flouting every rule in the book about democracy and governance and what. And they are mute. I, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm shocked. During the times of when we had the ambassadors here, this man would have been called out a long time ago. But you see, it's a, it's a pity. But we know, we know, some of us know that the West colludes with the International Monetary Fund to cause instability in some regions where the West has interest in getting natural resources. You saw what happened? He went to America and he was given accolades. No, this is a man who doesn't want to talk to the Chinese. We love him. Mm -hmm. So you know it's not about Hakainde Ichilema from my village. It's about my minerals, which they want. That's all. It has nothing to do with, the, no, me, I'm a favorite of the IMF or the West. No, it's about the fact that America controls the International Monetary Fund. America controls the World Bank. The Britain Woods institutions are not our institutions. I would have been expecting by now that we are even making a step towards entering the Brits. But what are we doing? We are too scared because the Americans will say, where are you going? You are entering the BRICS. Zambians, wake up. This man did not come to fix it. He came to fix you. Look at the price of mini meal. Look at the fuel prices. Look at the kwacha. Look at the mess in classrooms. Look at the squalor, the debt on the street. Sure, 
Mweleche mengombe and you are called bakateka. People are dying. Honestly, uleche mengombe abantu balefwa. Uyambela miyongombe abantu balazi minashua. Bahaga inde. What, what, what do you stand for? What do you stand for? This country or yourself? So, when you ask me these questions about whose problems are there that the opposition are being scattered, Hakainde has no following with the Zambian people. So he thinks his only way to perpetrate his rule is to completely annihilate anything called opposition. That's all. There's no other reason. Uh, you mentioned there's something to do with corruption. Uh, there is actually a screaming headline in one of the daily tabloids, the news diggers in particular, and it says corruption is high and uh, ambassador Swedish investors are avoiding Zambia. Should we conclude that indeed there is corruption in the country on the new Dawn administration? There is not only corruption, there is a stinking corruption. I have said that by the time he leaves the office, he will be the re recorded as the most corrupt leader of this republic. One, he never declared his assets. We see him heading Kato, and he's supposed to have maybe 90,000 head. The pictures that you members of the press see, do they give you an impression that someone has a head of 90,000? He has over 60 farms, but he's following uh, someone with a chicken run. And he's amassing more and more. How can one Zambian have so much property which he can't explain where they got from? They were born in the 1990s, in the, in, the, in the late 1950s or 60s. That's when they were born. Where did they amass their wealth? It's not generational wealth. It's wealth created in Zambia. Over what? What are the activities that have created this ostensibly huge wealth? And, and for me, when you ask me about corruption, why is it that you can have kakubo? One time he's seen with a handbag, he's taking a, a, a calendar. He's taking a calendar. The same kakubo the next day, he's collecting US dollars. If you are found with 5,000, it's you are found with the proceeds suspected to be of crime. They don't even define which crime they are charging you with. If you, find, you are found with some old wrecked car, they say, no, you got this car in 1990, you must have stolen. For them, you look at them, just go to State House compound. They came just recently walking, some in patapatas, now everybody's driving. Big cars, big houses, where are they getting the money? We are in the same economy that is stressed. When their friends, when they give each other con fertilizer contracts, fertilizer worth 35,000, 35 million kwacha, they pay each other 50 million. That's not corruption for Aga in the HDMI, it's just 10%. Kapala, my neighbor here. I mean, whatever they do, their boss acknowledges. And that's why, for me, I say, if Peter Piri says that his miru miu is cheaper than anyone else, he's just talking the boss's language. If Kakubo is collecting 200,000 from two different people, the president says, well done, you did a good job. That's private business. So for me, to, to, to have $5,000 in my handbag is not private business. It's only private business when it's Kakubo. And they call each other, no, this is, this is transparent. This, he was just caught with pants down. And there are more of that because, look, at this point in time, just observe the ministers. They were as thin as you and I. Now, my friend, watch them when they are walking. They can't even turn their necks. They, are, they have taken so much starch in their bodies, which is not even health. But you look at them when they are walking, they can't turn their heads. There is too much, too much money showing in their necks. So uh, that's not corruption. Uh, that's not corruption. But uh, should you be found with a, with a, with a duck 
that's corruption. With a scotch cut, that's corruption. But for them, uh, they, 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 are, they are upgrading their homes, they are buying big cars, they are going for holidays abroad. That's not corruption. I mean, with this economy, these rates, with the salaries that we pay our MPs and ministers, are you telling me you can take five children to Dubai if you are not corrupt? How? And the corruption is evident because when you go, you will find that the former lawyers for the president are the DPPs. They have these positions. So they positioned themselves in such a way that they can protect each other. You can only give a fiat to prosecute Edith Nawakwe on a phony charge which you yourself as president, you have committed. You know, as I have said, this Feruna case stinks right on your face. And uh, it doesn't matter what you do, what gymnastics you do. In fact, <laughs> I don't know who advises my friend because he, he should have been advised to just let sleeping dogs lie. But you even go and wake up a sleeping cat to, to revive the stories. Because I had always said, you people, you in UPND, stop this story. It's too embarrassing to your boss. Now there is Margareta. No, I'm the one who had them. And this is same so-called Margareta, Kenneth Margareta. He had even brought someone here and was asking me to go to court, accusing me of defaming him. When I said the last persons to be in custody of these two were Margareta. That's what I said. And I got two summons thrown at the gate, and uh, the next day they are online in Awakui, sued by Margaret. I said, well, let's see if they'll proceed. He failed to proceed. I think now they've beaten him up because he was the only one who didn't get a job. Think about anyone who was ever involved, whether it was from Baita TV, that young man is at Zamko. Zipole Mushala is at, uh, uh, I think, uh, Daily Mail. You think of Nicholas Pires, PF, PS, the whole lot of them, some are DCs. How come everybody who was involved got a job from Haga in the HLM? What was their role? What was their role? I'm the only one who didn't get a job. <laughs> I mean, tell me. How, how, how did uh, those people who were making films in the bush become known to Haga in the as to get a job? One is at uh, uh, Zamkom there. All the reporters, they are actually employed as the friends of the president. So now you come around with all that baggage, you want to throw it on Mr. Swagwi's daughter. Ah, well. Nizakamba, you can't shut me up. My father is still alive. He's almost reaching 100, my friend. So he taught me to stand up for myself, and I will. Hey, Madam President, as we may begin to wind up, what can be um, your last words, but also to the Zambian people that are watching in our lives? Uh, what I would like to advise my brothers and sisters is that this country belongs to all of us. Let us not lose hope. The International Monetary Fund, their actions of not supporting this country because they have realized that the president has no plan, Chimbu, no plan, is simply meant to create a crisis so that this country is in a crisis mode. And when the country is in a crisis mode, that's when the international looters arrive to loot your resources. So, however angry you are, however much the price of minimum is, however deprived you are in hospitals and schools, please know that UPND is a transitory government. Kwa salachabe two years, bazachoka. Banawanga Guirani Pamala. Hold yourselves. Keep this country safe. It's the only place we have on earth. You don't want what these Westerners have done in our neighboring countries in the DR Congo. You don't want you don't want to see what they did in Angola. 
You don't want to know what is happening in Mozambique. Zambia is an oasis of peace. Unfortunately, we have a leader who has no eyes. He doesn't understand the international plunder of African resources. He's an accomplice to the plunder of our resources. Because if he wasn't, he wouldn't give Vedanta the mine. Because Konkola mine, Konkola deep is the best mine on, on the surface of earth. He could have used that as an asset to get investment into the mine. There's no way he should have gone and started to give Mopani to some so-called Dubai-based company, which in fact is owned by Americans, which Americans are owners of Zambian bonds, which bonds they are refusing to discount so that we can get a, a, a credit, a, 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 a credit debt rescheduling. And then you go and reward them. No wonder the Chinese are saying, but how come? These are the same people who are holding bonds and the government is rewarding them with a mine. How do you do that? So when you ask me, what do we do? Look, we are not like hopelessly hopeless because we have a date set for the general election, which is known, published, and in the Constitution. It doesn't matter what machinations. Already, it's no longer 2021. It's 2024. 2025 is next year. Already, we are going there. What I'm asking you to do, my dear friends, the most important thing is that we must preserve this republic and show UPND that they, are, they were just an accident. It just happened on us. The way God works, we cried for a Saulo, we got one. But this one is worse than a combination of Saulo and, and Herod. Uh, this one is a, both a Herod and a So. So uh, the only thing we can do is keep the peace. Work hard. I know when we say work hard, you will say we have no fertilizer, we have, we have no jobs, we have no that. We can't have that with this kind of president who, when people are dying, he goes to head cattle. In a shabara monam life, ya chino chalo. Nari, nale, ishiba, fidefa, kuti, gafimo fiashtika, wakaunda, variku kopa beot. During the Mufurira disaster, very camping akudia. Nga kuava konela. You know, you the president is concerned. You have committees. Uh, during our time, we also had Korela in Luansha, and the chairperson of that was none other than uh, Dr. Korela, Dr. Kawimbe. A lot of people are still alive who can assist. Some of them are still working in government. But the, how can you help when the president is heading Keto? That's the head of cabinet. He must put his ministers together. Put the, we even got diplomats to sit in our committees when we had a disaster because you know that uh, uh, they must be in the committee. There's no need to start writing not the bows. When they are leaving the committee, they are referring to the meeting we held in the, in the Minister of Health's office and therefore we're disbursing $2 million. But, you know, it's, it's very sad that... Uh, we have this mess in town, and you have ministers going to China to go and ask for money for surveillance. I, that's, that's their level. That's their level. And uh, for me, I, I don't have time for them, but I'm begging that we are Zambians. This is our country, and it's our country that we must keep. Leaders come and go, and you know Hakainde is gone. He's finished. He's gone. This is DJ Mutati exclusive. All right, that's all right for you today, lovely viewers. If you did enjoy the video, please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you, lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.